a senior web strategist at 10 up um, we're a wordpress development and strategy agency focusing primarily on wordpress because we feel like it's a, a great development platform a really great cms and gives us the, the power that we need to build really robust websites <coughs> while still keeping the publishing process really seamless for our clients um, i have over four years of experience working with uh, top brands and interactive strategies prior to joining 10 up i focused pretty pretty specifically on social media strategy, but since then have moved into more general web strategy and helping clients really you know, form project plans, make their ideas really concrete, come up with strategies to, to bring those things to life using WordPress. Um, dozens of clients from universities that are local here to the area, like University of Rhode Island, to WordPress.com VIP clients like Universal Sports and TechCrunch. Um, you guys can follow me on Twitter at, at JessJurek. Jess I'll post a link to my slides right after the talk so you guys will have access to all these resources. And then you can always reach out to me or feel free to ask me any questions if you have them. I'm um, usually pretty good at getting back to people. So before I get started, I kind of want to get a sense for who we have in the room today. So raise your hand if this is your first WordCamp that you're attending today. Oh, that's awesome. Lots of new people. Very cool. Raise your hand if you are here today specifically to learn how to use WordPress for the very first time. That's awesome. Cool. How many here work for um, agencies or project managers, freelancers? Design people, content people, content slash marketing people. Cool. So we're really good mix in the room here. So I love giving this presentation to beginners because even though a lot of these things you might not know how to build yourself, you might not have the, the coach chops to do it. A lot of you do have positions in your companies where you can be a decision maker and you can really influence the type of software that you're using in your businesses. So hopefully after this presentation, you'll see how. WordPress can either help you if you're looking to relaunch your corporate site or if you're looking to launch your very first website. Uh, we can give you some examples of how, how WordPress is working in the wild here. So what's the session about? Exploring the power of WordPress. I've kind of divided this into three sections. We'll look at some unique front-end experiences, some websites that are really pushing the boundaries of design that are using WordPress. We'll also look at some customized back-end publishing experiences. So how do we take that core WordPress framework that a lot of us are familiar with for blogging and extend it to a more CMS implementation where we're managing all kinds of content from background skins to video to photo galleries um, and more. And then themes and plugins. So things, marketplaces that you guys can use as beginners to kind of start building your own websites on your own and the tools that are available to you to be able to do that. And it's inspiring you to expect more. I think all too often we hear WordPress can't do that or WordPress is a really great blogging tool but it's just not a good fit for a Fortune 500 company website and hope at the end of this presentation you guys can see that that's very much not true um, and there are lots of great huge companies even government agencies that are using WordPress in really impressive ways. So common myths about WordPress um, we're talking about using WordPress for more than just blogging. So design limitations, right? So raise your hand if someone has ever said to you that doesn't look like a WordPress site to me. Couple. Does anybody have like what does that mean if someone says that doesn't look like a WordPress site? Does anyone have an idea of what people when they say that? Yeah? yeah they don't have a logo at the bottom. <laughs> Speak up a little bit. It doesn't have a logo at the bottom. Apparently, design fun by powered by WordPress or whatever. Okay, sure. Anybody else? Yeah? It's not a blog. It's not a blog, right? Okay. Okay. I think WordPress sites can have similar logo. Oh, she's almost used to one. Okay, yeah, so that, I think that's a pretty, a pretty common answer, right? It's because of things like theme marketplaces and because WordPress has such a low barrier to entry for beginners like yourself, we start to see people thinking that WordPress sites have to have this kind of template looking feel, right? Big featured billboard, featured content areas, but we don't really expect to be able to do much else, right? So we'll, I'll show you guys some great examples today of how um, there really aren't any design limitations when you're building things using WordPress. And we can see how people are getting really creative front end work that they're doing. Um, so technical limitations, right? So WordPress is great for blogging, but WordPress can't support really complex data structures or interactive components. I um, have some good examples to show you guys today of how people are already doing that with WordPress. Um, inability to scale, right? That's one that we hear all the time. And no one really has like a concrete reason or theory why they think WordPress can't scale. They just have maybe heard before that it doesn't. Um, but there's some really great examples of WordPress operating really well at large scale um, for high traffic sites and then security issues. Um, those are kind of the four common things that we hear about when people 
object to using WordPress or something more than just a blog. So the debunkers, right? So WordPress sites don't have to look the same. We'll just look at a couple of case studies today that show WordPress sites that have incredibly diverse looks and feels and you'll be able to see um, just how far you can push design. Um, custom post types and robust APIs allow skilled developers, a lot of whom are here that you'll meet today, to extend WordPress to do amazing things. So the way that we approach developing WordPress is we view it very much as a framework, kind of as our home base. It's something that gives us a ton of power and core functionality that we can really extend to build just about anything. And you'll see some examples of that in the, the case studies I'm going to share with you guys. This is my favorite example of WordPress's ability to scale and a really easy response to someone if you're, if you're ever asked that question um, about WordPress's ability to scale. So WordPress.com, which is a free uh, blogging service with some premium add-ons that you can purchase, hosts 35 million plus sites, all running WordPress. So I think that's a, it's a pretty large implementation. I think it's a good example of how WordPress scales really well in the hands of, of really talented developers. Um, no major security issues in the last few years. Most security issues that are introduced to WordPress sites um, commonly happen through plugins. We'll talk a little bit about plugins today and some of the things that you guys should think of when you're adding plugins to your site. And WordPress itself um, powers nearly 15% of the world's top sites and 22% of active news sites in the US. It's really significant. There's a lot of sessions today. Um, Jake, actually, who I work with at TenUp, is going to be giving a presentation in the developer track talking about WordPress for enterprise implementations, um, and then a, a talk later today at the beginner track about WordPress as a CMS. So I think that these statistics really show that people are moving towards WordPress and people are starting to take WordPress more seriously. But something that beginners can do, and I hear a lot today about how to get back to the WordPress community and how to support this platform, I think the number one thing that beginners can do even coming out of their first WordCamp is talking about the power of WordPress, right? So when people say to you things like, WordPress can't do that, this doesn't look like a WordPress site, you have the tools and the information to be able to, to challenge that. Yeah. I was just saying that WordPress, uh, um, when you compare it to Joomla or Drupal, has the largest developer community of any of them. So whatever it can do today, we'll still soon do in the very near future. Absolutely. It's just it's crazy. Yep, and that's a great point. And I think as we start to see more, <clears throat> more larger businesses and even development companies rolling out WordPress and enterprise implementations, you'll see the platform start to exponentially grow, right? Because we need use cases. We need really high, high scale use cases for WordPress so we can see where some of the faults are and really work to improve those. Um, let's see. Okay, so we'll jump into some showcase sites here. So we're going to start with something that probably looks really familiar to you, especially if you're new to WordPress. So 2011, right? That's the default theme that comes with WordPress when you install it for the very first time. Um, 2011 makes developers really excited because there's a lot of very powerful functionality there that can be extended and customized. I actually use 2011 for, for my own theme, uh, for my own website. So what is 2011, right? It's a very simple blog-focused theme. You look at the 2011 theme, and the focus really is on content. Um, but there are, are a ton of powerful customization options, even with 2011, um, that you need absolutely no code background to be able to use. So we can look at what some of those look like. So you have your typical post edit screen, right? Um, should look really familiar to you with the WYSIWYG editor. You guys can get a sense of kind of how to move and manipulate your content, what it will look like on the front end of the site. You also have a, 2011 has a ton of theme options, so you can check, you can select what color palette you'd like, the link color that you'd like, even the layout. So you can actually manipulate where the content appears, whether it's on the left or the right, whether you have one column or sidebar, or however you would like that to lay out. And even the header in 2011, which you can see here, is customizable. So you can define an image, um, you can define a background image if you want. You can start to, even a very basic theme like 2011 that doesn't have much out of the box, you can start to really make your own. So if you look at 2012, this will be the theme that will come as a default theme for WordPress 3.5. 2012, I think, shows a really a big departure for WordPress in terms of what we're doing with the default theme. So you can see the look and feel of 2012. It's really different from 2011, right? There's not too much that we have to do the 2012 theme to make it look like a pretty basic small business website, right? You have a featured content area, area at the top, you can build workspace for your profiles and things, strong menus, you now have the option to include a header image or remove it. You'll also have in 2012 variable height header images, which is one of the big, bigger complaints of 2011 is meeting that flexibility. You have the featured content area here at the bottom, and even a blog roll on the side. So 2012 really starts to show how 
it starts to even, even in the default theme, start to challenge those assumptions that we have about what WordPress sites have to look like. And you'll have even more customization options in 2012, right? You no longer have to have that big header. The header will have variable heights. You can really start to manipulate the look and feel there. So looking at a few, um, a few examples of WordPress very out of the box, right? Some WordPress implementations that you might not expect. Some of these are client sites that we've worked on. Some of these are sites um, that other agencies have worked on just to give you a sense of kind of the breadth of things that you can build using WordPress. So twitchy.com, um, this is a site that our team built that launched in February. It's a Twitter creation site um, with a lot of unique social integration. So when the, uh, Michelle Malkin, who's a pretty popular conservative blogger, is behind twitchy.com, when she came to us to talk about the site, it was very much, she put her design foot, foot first, right? So she loved this idea of coming up with a unique look and feel that conveyed a lot of energy that showed that kind of youth and vibrancy that her content was going to show. So we took, you know, we took those ideas and we came up with a very bold look and feel. She has tons of different featured content areas on the site. You can see the featured carousel at the top. They have a featured story, story area right beneath that. And you can't see in the screenshot, they actually have a twire that has, um, has a ton of other featured content too. So the whole idea behind this is that their publishers literally scour Twitter through the best stories of the day. And they write about them on the blog. So we extended um, O Embed, which is technology that, so how many of you guys have embedded a YouTube video on your blog by just using a YouTube link? Right, so that's O Embed, right? It's being able to easily embed things into your blog by using just a link. So we extended O Embed functionality that comes baked into WordPress um, to, to make this really powerful for them. So they're able to, just by copying the link to the tweet, paste that into a post and have the, the tweet embed. You can actually see it right there where Daniel Tosh is. We were able to style that um, and have it really reflect the, the look and feel. And, uh, and again, you can see it's, uh, it really breaks some of those design, design conventions that you would associate with WordPress and, and shows how you can start to, even when you're just using it for a blogging presentation, push the look and feel and really evolve that. So Blondie.net, how many AV music fans do we have in the house? A couple. Um, so a really popular mainstream uh, music group, right? They have They've done a really, a lot of cool things um, with design in the UX here. So if you look at the site, it's blondie.net. Rather than having a typical um, hierarchy-based menu, they're working with infinite scroll. So as you click on different menu items, it'll scroll you up and down the page. Blondie's using this for more than just her blog, right? So you have a blog that talks about the group and where they're on tour, but you can also access information on their shows. You can access their music videos, playlists of her music. So she's really, this group is using their WordPress site as their digital hub place where they send all of their fans um, to learn more about the group and, and to see where they're, they're coming up next. So again, not just a blog, but a complete digital hub for the bloggy brand. Lightintimes.com. So this is Jay-Z's new lifestyle magazine that launched at WordPress just a few months ago. Um, I love this site because it, again, breaks a ton of design conventions, even regardless of WordPress, just looking at the web in general. They're really doing some new and unique things here. Um, very visual navigation model, tons of featured images. They really draw you into the content um, through these large featured images and videos. And Jay-Z is really positioning this not just as a blog, but a digital magazine. They have tons of great photo gallery features, related tweets for all of their stories. You're really starting to see a 360 view of these lifestyle stories on this site. Um, I think that I did this presentation previously in Milwaukee and said that if Jay-Z is using WordPress, we should all be using WordPress. So I'll say that again here because I think it's still, it's still true. Um, looking at universalsports.com, this is another site that our team worked on. So Universal Sports is part of the NBC Universal family. So again, part of a major TV network, a great example of, of using WordPress at a very high level. Um, our team utilized custom post types. And custom post types essentially allow you to build your own publishing experiences for different types of data and content. To be able to manage things like page scans and TV schedules and video content. And another kind of good statistic in terms of scaling, so WordPress sites that are built really well certainly can scale. Um, Universalsports.com, upon relaunching, the Boston Marathon was one of the major events that they were, they were running after the launch of the new site. And they were able to support 140,000 simultaneous live streams of the event on their site with little to no issues. We'll look at some of the, um, the admin screens associated with so this is an example 
of an admin screen that they're using on some of their sports pages. So you can see there's lots of different elements on this page, right? So content for universal sports means more than just the text on the page. It's everything from the background image to some of the, the images that you can see next to the titles here. So they really want, they wanted the ability and the empower to control the look and feel of those pages over time without having to bring in a developer resource. So using custom post types, we were able to build a custom administrative screen for them. You can see that an example down on the right. So they can define the background color by just using a hex code. They can define the background image by just uploading you know, any image that they've worked on in Photoshop. You can see the header ghost image with the metals and have the ability to change that. Sponsored header background, optimal have advertisers by that space. So it's really important to be able to change it on the fly as they needed to. Um, and then sponsored content background image as well. <clears throat> so you can see how we can take the things that we all love about WordPress for blogging and extend those to a very robust CMS implementation and start giving, giving our clients more power to control that content on their site. Um, another good example from universalsports.com. So a big uh, feature of their site are these really large format, beautiful photo galleries. So we built a custom interface to allow them to manage that. that looks like here. So I'm sure if, for those of you who aren't brand new to WordPress, one of the, the bigger complaints that, that we get from clients about WordPress is media management, right? It's just not very seamless. It's not very graceful. It's probably one of the core usability issues that we had, even with training clients on how to use WordPress. So since Photo Gallery is such a critical component to this site, we actually built a custom administration screen to help them build these. Um, so they can have different photos with different aspect ratios that they can define. They can define the image title, the description, attribution, if the images come from an external source. And they can categorize those by sport category. So it makes it really easy to, to manage these photo galleries across, across the site. Any questions so far? Are they still working? <clears throat> so another example of Universal Sports. So this is their schedule page. Obviously, as a TV network, they have online events, but they also have your traditional TV events. So it's really important for them to be able to promote those. And their schedules change on almost a daily basis. So it's really not feasible for them to be able to call up even our teams as their external external developer and have us make these content updates for them. Nor do we want to, right? So. Ideally, you guys are working with development teams that want to put the power of the content on your site in your hands, right? Your development team should really be working and collaborating with you for the space to initiatives, the big ideas, the big features and functionality. Content is something that you very much should, should want to have control of and, and should be able to, and it's very possible using WordPress. So if we look at the custom publishing interface we built here, you can see again, very easy. Right? You almost wouldn't even, even if you were completely new to the site, someone kind of just threw you in the ad and asked you to create a TV listing, you could probably do it, right? It's pretty intuitive. So you've got your sport, you can select your sport, your start date, um, anything that you really need to input for the show. And to complement this publishing interface, we actually also built an importer tool that allows them to just take an Excel file with all this information on the TV schedule and upload it and make content updates that way too. Yeah. When you talk about development, So my question is, when you talk about working with a development team or an agency that does this, yep. <clears throat> the problem for this whole sphere when it comes to websites, graphic design, and there's no real standard certification mm -hmm. for what is a web developer or web designer. So yep. like in the early days, it was just all about pretty because nobody had a website. It was like a Mona Lisa you hang on the wall that was static. <laughs> Yeah. And it was like, wow, you're the one person that has a website. Right. <clears throat> so here's my question. How, what do you look for if you want, I mean, because you need the pretty, the graphic mm -hmm. designer, but you also need coders and Power, like, right. so what do you look for in a team? Because I'm a non-technical person, yeah. you'll obviously understand That's all of this, but. That's a great question. Um, so I would say anytime you're, there's a couple different things you need to ask yourself when you're looking for a development partner, right? Uh, first, budget. What are you willing to invest? What are you willing to spend? That'll help kind of exclude some some teams from from what you're, you're able to scout and kind of select for yourself. And then also, you know, what are you looking to build? How complex is it? If it's something that's fairly basic, if, you know, say you're a real estate agent that's launching your very first website and you just want a place to show your listings, there might be a really good off-the-shelf theme option for you that you can just purchase it and use that. Um, but if you're looking to do something more custom and you want to bring a development team in, Ask for case studies, right? Who are your clients? Who have you worked with in the past? Ask 
specifically, what did you do on this project? Were you involved in the design? Were you involved in the user experience? Did you do the development? Um, and then one thing that you actually mentioned that's a great event that WordPress talent, how involved are you in the community? How many plugins do you have available in the WordPress plugin repository? Um, even when we hire developers for our team, that's a common question that we ask. We can see their products in the wild, see how popular they are with users, and really evaluate that code. Go ahead. You have like the graphic designers. You have the graphic designers, or at least this is what I understand as a relative novice. Sure. The graphic designers, the coders, the developers, then usability. Yes. And are they adhering to a usability standard? Then also security standards. Yes. So if you're taking credit card payments on your site directly, yes. and how do you make sure, I mean, what do you ask for? How do you ask, like, do you have these type of people on your team? I mean, it seems so vague and nebulous, you know? Right, right. You can't say, like, are you a CPA, are you a JD, an MD, you know, this, as a way to sort of screen out right. the riffraff. I think case, case studies are a really good place to start with that. So getting, you know, talent to show you examples of their work. References, I mean, I know it sounds a little old school now, but it, it works, you know, talk to, talk to these, talk to the developers' clients, you know, how, how was their communication style? Did they feel like they were really attentive to their requests, you know? Once the site was done, was it what they expected? Did it meet their expectations? So I would say case studies, you know, take a look at the work that they've done in the past and then also references, you know, talk to the people that they work with, get a sense for who they are and what their background is. Um, another really great resource for WordPress development resources in particular that has been vetted is um, codepoet.com. They actually just relaunched their site as a resource for WordPress developers who are um, either you know, just starting out the business or who have their own agencies. But they also have a list of kind of approved vendors um, that you can also look at. And your WordPress Boston meetup group is also a really great place to start. You guys have a ton of really great resources in the community here, and I'm sure you know anybody at those meetup groups is willing to point you in the direction of, of really good talent. Does that help? Yeah, it helps a lot. Okay, good. So Rhode Island Energy, this is a site that our team worked on for the University of Rhode Island to actually just launched last week. Uh, the URL is rienergy.org. So this is an online hub that shows energy usage data from across the state. So we used um, lots of different page templates to allow them to create different looks and feels for interior pages. So they had the ability to either have a right sidebar or eliminate that sidebar. And uh, had a couple of different layout options that I can, I can show you some examples of. And also easy embed support for flash-based maps. You can see the map here in the center of the screen. Uh, they're able to populate those on pages very similar to, to how Embed works, which is being able to copy and paste the link. And then also the on the fly graphing wizard, which we custom built for this project, and I'll show you guys a little bit of a peek under the foot of that. So essentially what we did is we built a chart wizard specifically for WordPress. So by using this wizard, what they can do is they can upload a CSV file, they can name the chart, they can choose which uh, rows and columns they want to pull from the Excel spreadsheet into the graphing table. They can find whether the dates are string or, or, or number based, and then even select the type of chart they would like to display. And you can see a, an example of the output there. So again, you know, one of those things that we hear all the time with WordPress sites, not really good at handling a lot of data, not really good at handling interactive elements. Here's the custom built solution that our team built for, for graphing, right? So it's as simple as being able to upload a CSV file, and you can have these really beautiful interactive graphs on your site um, using WordPress core functionality and then also the uh, Google Charts API to build this. And this is something that I'll have to kind of put my foot in my mouth a little bit because I told the Milwaukee folks this last month, but we are planning on releasing this as a plugin because um, we feel like there's a there's a real gap there for people who are looking to do interactive charting with WordPress. Um, it's been a, actually a pretty common request for us over the last couple of months. So soon, hopefully in the next couple of months, we'll uh, be cleaning this plugin up a bit and we'll be able to release that and it's something that anyone in the community can use. So eMusic, uh, music subscription service, they have 6 million visit, visits per month, 400,000 subscribers, so supporting a really large, robust, active user base. Um, eMusic is a really, if you're just interested in some of the things that it takes to move a site from a legacy CMS to something like WordPress, Scott Taylor, who is their internal dev over at eMusic, gave a really great presentation at WordCamp San Francisco last year about the process they went through. I have the link here on my slides and you guys can access them after the talk, but he gives a really good overview of the questions that you should ask yourself, you know, when moving to WordPress and some of the planning that needs to go into it. If there are any project managers in the room, particularly that manage kind of big website build-outs, I recommend it even for advanced project managers. 
Scott has a, really, a lot of great insight there. Argo MT, um, a small business that we work with, is based in the Chicago area. They're an online translation service. Again, um, use custom post types to make content management for them a breeze. Now, again, this is a little bit more of a simpler implementation, but again, you're very important for the client to be able to have control over things like advertising landing pages. I know the um, session previous was the lead generation, and they use their site almost primarily for that. And then integration with Argo's online application. So they have a Ruby on Rails application that they use to provide this automated translation service, and their corporate website hooks um, seamlessly into that. So you can see this is a, a custom post type that we built for them to help them manage their landing pages. So they can control all the copy that appears in the landing pages. You have the different buttons that they can customize. You have a feature video that is super easy to embed. Um, different touts, so touts essentially are kind of the selling points of their product. They can manipulate those very easily. And again, so everything that you see here, right, they have control over the content and, and the way that looks. Broadbandmap.gov, a um, great example of, of a government agency using WordPress. So essentially what the site does is it allows users from all across the country to view broadband availability in every neighborhood in the United States. And this site itself supports over 25 million data records. So again, a really great example of a site in the wild that really is performing at scale um, and has a ton of great interactive elements. I actually encourage you guys to check it out. It's a pretty, pretty useful tool. So we're going to move into theme libraries and some of the tools that are, are available to you guys as beginners to help customize your site. Does anybody have any questions in the case studies before I move on from that? She's actually very behind to touch in. Sorry, Lily, really I have you running all over. <laughs> I have a question about the Argo MT. I think that was one before this. Yeah. Now, it has searchable database. Could you talk a little bit about what you all did to set up that database? And also, does that include links to websites as well? searchable database. Because it looked like there were, there were places on there where, you know, people could actually search. I don't know. Oh, are you seeing the form here? Yes. So that form is actually to log in, uh, to create an account to use their app, their online application for the translation service. Have you done any work like that with um, a website, in web WordPress, where there's content behind where there's a searchable, some type of searchable database? Yeah, yeah. And we, if you want, since it's a more specific question, maybe we can talk after. Anybody else? So theme libraries. Um, there's a ton of great theme libraries that offer a lot of off-the-shelf options, some for free, some for a pretty minimal investment. Um, most commercial themes, if you're looking at, like even high-end themes will typically tend to run you about 100 bucks. So if you're the kind of person who's looking for maybe more than just your basic WordPress install of the 2011 or 2012, but you don't really need custom design, this might be your first web property, you're kind of just looking to see how much traffic you can generate, whether you're able to it, theme libraries can be a great place to start. They're also a really great place to start with research. If you have no idea what you like, if you don't know what you want in terms of design, you can get a lot of inspiration from theme libraries. Yeah. Are all themes for Calm and Org, are, are all themes for Calm and Org uh, mobile optimized? Are all themes, I think you're the second. Right, so for WordPress.com or WordPress.org, are most or all themes at this point mobile optimized? Depends on the theme. I would say probably most are. Um, there's two ways you can mobile optimize a theme. Um, responsive design, which is essentially just making edits to the style sheet, so you can adjust the layout to fit the screen that you're viewing it on. Um, Boston Globe is a really great example of responsive design, or a mobile theme, which is something that you're probably more used to seeing. So if anyone's viewed a WordPress site from their phone and you kind of have that very bare bones look and feel, you can toggle off, off and on on the bottom. It's an example of a, a mobile specific theme. But yes, the, I was wondering, so the mobile specific themes, because I've seen two types of mobile, mobile websites yep. where you'll get an email, let's say, for example, and some of them will take you directly to a mobile site, or some of them will give you an option that, where there's actually two sites, of one for a site built for viewing on a desktop computer or a mobile computer. Which one do most of these mobile themes do? So it, really, it really depends on the theme. So 2011, which is one of the first ones mm -hmm. I showed, it actually uses responsive design, so it manipulates the layout on the front end to, to serve those mobile users. Um, some mobile sites will have that detection built in, so you're just you're, you're drawn to just a distinct mobile view. Some of them will give you the opportunity to choose for yourself. So it really just depends yeah. on how the theme is built. Anybody else? Um, so again, I mentioned that there are so for niches that are, are really 
popular in the WordPress community. So like a lot of photo bloggers use um, use WordPress, a lot of entertainers use, use WordPress. You can find a lot of good off-the-shelf theme options too, to at least get you started. So some some ones to check out, Woo Themes, Studio Press, and Theme Forest um, are all really good, reliable theme libraries. Um, plugins. Yep, there's probably a plugin for that. Um, plugins are probably beginners, one of their very favorite things about WordPress because with very little development skills, you can add custom features to your site pretty easily. So when you're looking for plugins, a great place to start is the WordPress.org plugin repository. Um, those plugins are available for free. But again, be selective when you're, when you're researching for plugins, right? Make sure you keep your plugins up to date and avoid plugins that replicate core functionality. So if it's something that can be built with a custom post type, you're probably better off either one, learning how to do it yourself, or hiring a developer to help you with it, um, rather than using a plugin that, that does something that, that core can easily be extended to do. And I'm going to go through just quickly a few of my um, favorite plugins that I, that I use personally or that we use for client sites. So Gravity Forms is a really great commercial plugin for forms, right? So everyone has a use for forms. If you're a small business looking to do lead generation, this might be a really powerful tool for you if you are a freelancer looking to add a contact form. Um, Gravity Forms helps with all that. Gravity Forms, I also really encourage you guys as you're looking into it to look at their add-ons, because Gravity Forms itself, so even plugins can be extended to do even greater things, right? It's not just WordPress itself that we can, we can extend to do those things. WooCommerce, um, a really great commercial plugin for e-commerce stores. So if you are a fashion blogger, and a couple years from now you've built up a, a pretty good following for yourself, and you're looking to add an e-commerce store to sell some of your goods, uh, WooCommerce is a really great tool for that. You can manage your products, shipping, um, everything using that WooCommerce plugin. I really great one to, to check out. BB Press uh, was actually just relaunched a few weeks ago. Version 2.0 is now built as a plugin for WordPress. Very powerful forum software. Um, Usher uses the BB Press to support his community forums on his website. So again, if you're, if you're a WordPress user, you're, you're in a good company. BuddyPress allows you to add a social network to your WordPress implementation. Um, different features in BuddyPress include activity streams, user groups, um, extended profiles, and private messaging. So if you have you know, a site that you're really starting to build up a community, you have a lot of active readers, you have a lot of engagement in your comments, and you're looking to build something that kind of takes it to the next level and brings that social interaction to the next level, BuddyPress is, is a really great tool for that. And if you want even more inspiration, these are some resources that you guys can visit to see what people are building with WordPress. Um, WordPress.com VIP News, they do a really great job of profiling sites that either launch on the WordPress.com platform um, or, or are, are self-installs. The WordPress Showcase, so just WordPress.org slash showcase. The BuddyPress Showcase, they have lots of great examples of, of BuddyPress in the wild. And then CodeQuote, which I mentioned before, provides both resources to who are looking to build a business with WordPress, and then also points you to, um, to those resources who have, who can you know, provide the development support that you might be looking for. And that's it. Thank you guys for taking some questions. We have two minutes. Here, yeah. Within the next day or two, and then I'll also be posting a link to these on Twitter right after the talk. Yeah. Um, how does WooCommerce um, compare to Shopify? Because you know Shopify is like Pandora, but for shopping. So. Right. I mean, there are a couple of different e-commerce solutions like out there for WordPress. I mean, WooCommerce is one that we just we tend to like to work with. It's something that we can extend very easily as developers. It has a lot of power in its box. Um, Shopify is also a, it's also a good a good solution. We can, we can talk a little bit more after too if you want. Right here in the middle, I think. What's the copyright um, uh, ramifications of when you're posting something like a, a YouTube video on your site? Is there anything that you need to be concerned about grabbing content and linking it on your site? Right. So most most content that you'll find on YouTube is is in the public domain, right? So I would say just be conscious of when you're pulling content from other sites. Is there a copyright on it? Is it something that the author is open to having reused? If you're unsure, ask. Yep. Is some um, 
places on the web like Facebook, which is clearly different than this, but I want to know what about the intellectual property, and I know it's a big rabbit hole, but when you post stuff on Calm or Or, do you own the content? Because some, some places, some free, especially, you know, free website um, building places, like the Calm version, once you post something, it's no longer your intellectual property. So I've actually seen entire sessions on intellectual property at WordCamp, so it is, um, maybe, do, do you mind if we talk after, just because it's, I probably can't give a very good answer in a couple seconds. <laughs> Any, anybody else? Okay, great, thank you guys so much, I really